Hey guys, it's your girl Sage. I hope you're having a wonderful day or night whenever this video finds you. I'm here with Our Daily Bread and for today we have the book of Leviticus chapter 27. Redeeming persons and property dedicated to God. Now the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, When a man consecrates by a vow certain persons to the Lord according to your valuation, if your valuation is of a male from 20 years old up to 60 years old, then your valuation shall be 50 shekels of silver according to the shekel of the sanctuary. If it is a female, then your valuation shall be 30 shekels. And if from 5 years old up to 20 years old, then your valuation for a male shall be 20 shekels, and for a female, 10 shekels. And if from a month old up to five years old, then your valuation for a male shall be five shekels of silver, and for a female your valuation shall be three shekels of silver. And if from sixty years old and above, if it is a male, then your valuation shall be fifteen shekels, and for a female, ten shekels. But if he is too poor to pay your valuation, then he shall present himself before the priest, and the priest shall set a value for him. According to the ability of him who vowed, the priest shall value him. If it is an animal that men may bring as an offering to the Lord, all that anyone gives to the Lord shall be holy. He shall not substitute it or exchange it good for bad or bad for good. And if he at all exchanges animal for animal, then both it and the one exchange for it shall be holy. If it is an unclean animal which they do not offer as a sacrifice to the Lord, then he shall present the animal before the priest, and the priest shall set a value for it. Whether it is good or bad, as you the priest value it, so it shall be. But if he wants at all to redeem it, then he must add one-fifth uh, to your valuation. And when a man dedicates his house to be holy to the Lord, then the priest shall set a value for it, whether it is good or bad, as the priest values it, so it shall stand. If he who dedicated it wants to redeem his house, then he must add one-fifth of the money of your valuation to it, and it shall be his. If a man dedicates to the Lord part of a field of his possession, then your valuation shall be according to the seed for it. A homer of barley seed shall be valued at fifty shekels of silver. If he dedicates his field from the year of Jubilee, according to your valuation, it shall stand. But if he dedicates his field after the Jubilee, then the priest shall reckon to him the money due according to the years that remain till the year of Jubilee, and it shall be deducted from your valuation. And if he who dedicates the field ever wishes to redeem it, then he must add one-fifth of the money of your valuation to it, and it shall belong to him. But if he does not want to redeem the field, or if he has sold the field to another man, it shall not be redeemed any more. But the field, when it is released in the Jubilee, shall be holy to the Lord as a devoted field. It shall be the possession of the priest. And if a man dedicates to the Lord a field which he has bought, which is not the field of his possession, then the priest shall reckon to him the worth of your valuation up to the year of Jubilee, and he shall give your valuation on that day as a holy offering to the Lord. In the year of Jubilee, the field shall return to him from whom it was bought, to the one who owned the land as a possession." And all your valuation shall be according to the shekel of the sanctuary, twenty geras to the shekel. But the firstborn of the animals, which should be the Lord's firstborn, no man shall dedicate, whether it is an ox or a sheep, it is the Lord's. And if it is an unclean animal, then he shall redeem it according to your valuation, and shall add one-fifth to it. Or, if it is not redeemed, then it shall be sold according to your valuation. Nevertheless, no devoted offering that a man may devote to the Lord of all the beasts, of all that he has, both man and beast, or the field of his possession, shall be sold or redeemed. Every devoted offering is most holy to the Lord. No person under the ban who may become doomed to destruction among men shall be redeemed, but shall surely be put to death. And... All the tithe of the land, whether of the seed or the land or the fruit of the tree, 
is the Lord's. It is holy to the Lord. If a man wants it all to redeem any of his tithes, he shall add one-fifth to it. And concerning the tithe of the herd or the flock, of whatever passes under the rod, the tenth shall be holy to the Lord. He shall not inquire whether it is good or bad, nor shall he exchange it. And if he exchanges it at all, then both it and the one exchange for it shall be holy. It shall not be redeemed. These are the commandments which the Lord commanded Moses for the children of Israel on Mount Sinai. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about this chapter. So this chapter wrap, wraps up essentially the commandments and stipulations that the Lord has given for his people. Um, and in this chapter specifically, it's actually talking a lot about the um, financial exchanges that occur in the house of the Lord. And I say the house of the Lord because it's either the tabernacle at the time that's being written, but it does carry on when the temple was built as well. Um, but nonetheless, this is talking about the redemptions that could be made from the house of the Lord, because we have to um, observe that the truth is mankind is not perfect, that when we make a vow that mankind sometimes either delays to fulfill it or sometimes they may even rescind on what it is that they vowed. Um, and that's why we should actually take a lot of faith and great stock in the fact that that God is not man who should lie or change his mind. Because when God speaks, it happens. That's why when we meet somebody who is a man of their word, it, they are so valuable. Because a lot of us, we fall short. We make a vow to something and we end up changing our minds on it. And even despite this, despite the fact that it displeases the Lord when we go back on a vow, that um, the Lord has made way for his people to still make make even or to compensate for that. For example, um, when I was talking about the servants, we know that there's different value on, on the servants depending on their age, depending on their sex. Um, and God put these values on these servants with these variables simply because of the physical work that they could do. We all have value in the Lord's eyes. All of us were made in the image of the Lord. But... At the same time, the the financial value that was placed on the servants of the Lord that were dedicated to the Lord, um, and I say this servants because it's um, not so much talking about each and every person that we meet every day. You don't just walk up to somebody on the street and say, you're worth 30 shekels. You don't do that. Um, but this is talking more about their ability to provide service. So, for example, they've been dedicated to the house of the Lord, and they are technically servants of the Lord, working in the house of the Lord. And it's what their physical capability is that is being um, dedicated um, when it comes to their monetary value, which is why, of course, they're priced by shekels according to their age and their sex. Um, it's according to the physical service and labor that they are able to do. Um and this is speaking on average, by the way, because I know everybody is a little different. But on average, men of certain age tend to have more muscle uh, maturation than women of a certain age as well. And I'm just speaking anatomically um, and biologically from that perspective. Um, but anyways... Then, of course, it goes on to talk about um, the stipulations that would occur in an animal exchange. Also, how God will not be accepting any blemished animals, any imperfect animals, because also he is holy and is righteous and deserves nothing but the best. We also remember from the book of Genesis when Cain and Abel were making offerings to the Lord that, that Abel had offered the largest produce that he was able to grow. Whereas um, Cain, on the other hand, offered a mediocre kind of livestock animal. He's like, I'm going to keep the best one for myself, but I'm going to give this one to God because this one's pretty nice, you know, and God ended up rejecting um, Cain's offering, but accepted Abel's offering. So that's also why we're called to be observant of what it is that we're dedicating to the Lord. But even so, 
Um, we also see the stipulation that the Lord will not take anything that is unblemished, but all firstborns belong to the Lord. So the Lord already came up with a way for his people to get around if, well, what if my firstborn is born lame? What can I do then? The Lord gives them an opportunity and out for them to be able to redeem that animal that the Lord will not accept because even though it is firstborn, it might be lame in some way. It might be blind. Something might be wrong with it where it is not perfect and pure as the Lord is. So he cannot accept it. So the Lord made a way for his people to be able to redeem that animal so that they could keep it for themselves. And when I say keep it for themselves, they can go home and kill it and eat it for dinner. But the point of the being is that it's no longer a sacrifice consecrated to the Lord. And so the Lord does this because, again, he understands that that not everything in this world is going to be perfect. He is perfect, but he also is not of this world. So the Lord created ways for his people to still be able to follow and observe his laws and commands with respect in a way that is understandable to them. Because also a lot of this has um, a lot of placement on financial value of things. But at the same time, it's still in observance to the Lord as well, especially when we get to the part where it's talking about selling part of a field and or part of um, a field that that has value. But on the year of Jubilee, it will be redeemed only at the value of the field. But every year before the Jubilee, before the next Jubilee, its value goes increasingly down from the first year to the last year. Um, so the year right before the Jubilee, that's when the value of it goes down. Um, because again, in the year of the Jubilee, it's basically at its flat rate selling value uh, and not having that increase anymore. And the reason that we see this reoccurring pattern of the adding the one fifth um, increase to it when the item is being redeemed is as I was mentioning before, that when we make a vow and we change our mind on it or we delay on it or we decide to go against it, it's displeasing to the Lord because we're not representing him anymore. You know, we were created in the image of God and when the Lord speaks, it happens. No word from the Lord ever returns void. So when we are called to be like him, we are called to be holy because he is holy. We are also called to be people that when we speak, it is done. It is done. We will do it because that's who we are. That's who we were created to be. We were not created to be people that go and say something and then go and change our mind and flam flam on it because also nobody has any faith in those people. And the reason people have faith in the man that speaks, um, the man who keeps his promises is because he's exactly that. He's the man who keeps his promises. So that is the person that we in like a works workplace situation, for example, we place our faith into because he's representing qualities of God. So, That's why it's important for us to keep our word when we speak something. But even then, the Lord has made a way for his people to still receive redemption, despite the fact that they are not able to keep their word, despite the fact that they fall short sometimes. And that's also what we see through Jesus as well. Jesus is our redemption, despite the fact that we may fall short at times. But in any case, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this word up here. I am praying that this message bless someone. And if it did, feel free to like, subscribe. And until next time, I hope all of y'all take care. Bye-bye.